Um, we're going to go to our last storyteller of the first set. Uh, you were mentioned uh, arguing with the brother. Do you know that? How you argue with your siblings? Perhaps, yeah. No, no, I never heard you argue with your siblings. So th those are the people like, that you argue best with. So for me, there's only been one person that I had a real argument with in Mezrab, so he's my absolute brother, my Mezrab brother. Um, we also were twins because we both told a story for the first time on the same night, so we're actually the same age. Um, <laughs> so please, please put your hands together for my Mezrab twin, Chidi. saying this, I'm not saying it because I want to feel superior, which I do, but, I don't quite worry, but I'm saying it because baking bread saved my life. Baking bread um, healed me. Uh, prior to my introduction to bed breaking, uh, bread baking, sorry, um, I was in an unhealed state, and I might as well tell you why this was the case. Uh, a couple of years ago, I woke up one morning on a very, very ordinary day. And um, outside, a couple of white fluffy clouds sort of made their way across a bright blue sky. And I really should have known, I should have seen the sign up there in the sky, because one of those clouds was draped <coughs> in the form of a little fluffy dog of the kind that I really don't like. <laughs> so I should have known. But no, 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 no. I put on my jogging, uh, jogging pants. Uh, ran off to the bakery to grab a stick of French bread. It was a completely ordinary trip to the bakery. Everything was fine until I got in there and came face to face with a little old lady. That's right, a little old lady. Actually, I wasn't face to face. I was close enough to see her face, and it was the face of a horrible little old lady pretended to be a nice little old lady. Um, most of the people in the bakery were fooled by her smile, but not me. Because it's in the eyes. You look into the eyes, and, and the eyes reveal the true horrible little old lady. Behind that, oh, I'm such a sweet little old lady veneer, was a werewolf scrunched down into a little lady package. And, and you have to understand, I'm not anti little old lady, I'm anti horrible little old ladies, <laughs> because they're dangerous, they're very, very sneaky, and I, I have historical facts to back up my position. One, who gave Snow White a poisoned apple? <laughs> and who thought about eating, I repeat, eating two human beings called Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> so, this horrible little old lady in the bakery, she wasn't alone because a meter from the uh, uh, from her steel toe cap to, shall we say, orthopedic shoes, was a little fluffy dog. Now, generally speaking, people who know me well know me well. They know I really like dogs. I love dogs. I love I love all creatures. But because of a genetic thing, I have a deep and bitter resentment of that particular breed of animal. I can't help it. <laughs> and then the combination, the combination of a horrible little old lady and her pet fluffy dog created what I think our American cousins call a situation. <laughs> <laughs> the emergency system in my head, which had been fed on a diet of simple Hollywood action movies, took over. Before I knew it, I pulled out a 9mm and was shooting. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, sorry, is that your dog? <laughs> you have fresh meat? <laughs> For your ravioli tonight. Actually, actually, wait, wait, I didn't say that. That didn't happen. That was in my mind. What actually happened, what actually happened is I came to my senses in the middle of the bakery, pointing my two fingers at a terrified dog like this. And it was terrible because it was dead quiet. Everyone was looking at me. I felt like a capital fool. A professional idiot, uh, a buffoon with a doctorate degree. I, 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 I was so embarrassed. But you have to move on. You can't stop. You have to move on. So I scraped the rest of my dignity on the floor, put it in my pocket, and I sort of snuck over to a basket over here and grabbed the last baguette. Now at this point, normally the story would calm down. Everything would calm down. People would go about their bakery business, 
I'd be left in the corner dripping with shame, and it should have been good. But that horrible little old lady decided at that moment she also wanted the last baguette. And what did she do? She began to sob and cry. I want that baguette. And then the little dog joined in and was just howling. Just going like that. So I had sobbing over here and howling there. And it broke my spirit. It broke my spirit. I couldn't resist. My, my plans to not give the baguette, my, my resistance melted like, I don't know, ice cream in a magnetron or something like that. And, and, and I was just ruined. I didn't know what to do. And then I thought for a moment, okay, try and resist, but I couldn't because the old lady voice was there and the howling dog, and very slowly, sure enough, you know, sort of without, without having any sense of control, I began to give it the back end. I didn't want to give it the back end. It was going, it was going, it was going, it was going, it was going. And then I found out just how horrible that horrible old lady was because she snatched that back end. She snatched it. She didn't say thank you, not even a nod of acknowledgement. And then I thought, okay, it's one of those days, this is life, I was about to let it go. When the little fluffy dog got onto its hind feet and went, <laughs> a red mist covered my eyes. And in a fit of glorious rage, I snatched that baguette right back. <laughs> and then the situation escalated. Because the little fluffy dog took on the personality of a Tyrannosaurus Rex and attacked. But I was ready. Too ready, perhaps? It took, uh, I think, about 11 minutes to get the dog down from the ceiling fan. Um, it, it, was, it was an honest mistake. I, I misjudged the weight of the dog. I used to baby animals. What, what I explained is that when, when, when the fluffy Tyrannosaurus came at me, I defended myself with a sort of Leo Messi style backflip. Like that. And the idea was that the dog would bounce on or just over the couch. I didn't know it was up to the fan. And that the leash would tangle in the fan blades. I had no idea. I really had no idea this was going to happen. But don't, don't, don't worry, because the leash, it was attached to a fancy harness. Not to. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, things eventually settled down and the horrible little old lady soothed her trembling pet. Some people left the baby, other people came in, and that should have been that. But you know how some people just can't let things be. That horrible little old lady. Yes. Um, I have a sort of double feeling about what happened next. Because on the one hand, I appreciate the horrible little old lady's warrior skills. They're amazing. <laughs> but on the other hand, those same warrior skills caused me incredible suffering. What happened? Without announcing it, she stayed up to me, jabbed me in the back of the knee with her walking stick, hit me on the head when I went down, and then with a completely, completely unnecessary flourish, she poked me where it really hurts. I screamed, I screamed, I'm sorry, I screamed. My eyes were, were shedding tears like a, a garden water feature. And my particulars shouted out, Lord, open up those pearly gates, we're coming home. I, I was messed up, I was messed up. I was staggering around in pain and agony and totally humiliated. And so the last bit of cool in my system evaporated. It disappeared. And I looked at the old lady, and I went to her. And the As you see, very touch. Because I know how fragile little old ladies can be, even horrible ones. So I was very gentle. What did she do? She began to scream and shout as if I had just speed barbecued her dog and eaten it in front of her eyes. Come on, there's no way, never, ever, ever, ever would I do such a thing. Never. Not within a month of my last puppy dog barbecue experience. And, 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 and to make matters worse, who should come into the bakery at that moment but two of Amsterdam's finest and burliest police officers? They looked at the shouting woman, and looked at me. I looked at that officer, and I looked at the other one. And I realized this was simply a non-explanation situation. So what I did, I tried the double zigzag with the triple twist, and almost got out of the bed. Almost. Almost. I'll spare you the details. I'll spare you the details. But I'll just tell you this. The ensuing experience left me physically and mentally shattered. The pieces of my body and mind 
swiveled around, rolled around Amsterdam like a scorned serpent. It was a dark, dark period. You can imagine my method of movement meant that I wore holes out in the toes of my shoes, in the knees of my jeans, the front of my shirt was all ragged, my hands were cut and bleeding. It was terrible. It was terrible. The pain, even as I stand now, it's a miracle that I stand thinking of this memory because it's horrible. And um, anyway, one sunny day, I'm still wriggling around, wriggling around. I was wriggling across a zebra crossing when who should come along but my friend, Yekia. And Yekia said, Chidi. I said, yes. Yeah. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm suffering. <laughs> he said, oh, you're suffering. There are many ways to suffer. And to prove that, he took a quick hand. He was holding Amazing. It was absolutely amazing. All the bits and pieces of my body got together again. My ankle bones came to the shin bone, which connected to the thigh bone, which connected to the hip bone. And before long, I was boogieing around, standing in front of him. Yeah, I'm alive, I'm alive, I feel good. And I grabbed that bread out of his hand and swallowed it in three seconds. I'm sorry, it was bad. We had an argument in which he said I was greedy and ungrateful. I understood his point, but I countered the fact and reason and said, if he hadn't made such nice bread, I would have snatched him and gobbled it up. Ha ha ha. So that's what happened. And then he said, okay, help me. I need this bread to give it to somebody and there's nothing left. So I went to help you out. Make some more bread. And that's how I learned to bake. That's how I learned to bake. And that's how I learned to fill myself with goodness and baking it. And I want to say just a little thing that baking bread, the act of getting water, yeast, flour, a little bit of salt, massaging it with gentle love and care, letting it rise, knocking it down again, letting it rise, and you put it in the oven 20, 25 minutes later, you have heaven. It's amazing baking bread. I can tell you that baking bread healed me. Baking bread gave me the confidence to go out into the center of Amsterdam on a busy afternoon and walk around like this. That's what I mean. <laughs> Baking bread gave me the courage, the courage. When asked, sir, do you bake your own bread? To say, in fact, yes, I do. <laughs> so what I'm basically trying to say with all this is, supposing you've just been thrown out of the house after the end of a seven-year relationship, don't worry. You just hear you're about to lose your job. Because head office wants to uh, streamline. No need for panic. Tiddlywinks, your pet pussycat, was eaten by a gang of mentally disturbed pigeons. Don't cry. Run your eyes. All you need to do is bake some bread, and everything will be perfectly fine. 